Coming up is an inbox review of the 148th HK Models B17G with a little bit of a difference. Let's just listen to the start of the B17. Now for a little history. The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress is a four-engine heavy bomber developed in the 1930s for the United States Army Air Corps. A fun fact was that the name Flying Fortress was actually coined by a reporter from the Seattle Times. He observed the plane and the large amount of machine guns sticking out from this amazing new plane and described it as the 15-ton Flying Fortress in a picture caption within his paper. Boeing quickly saw the value of the name and trademarked it for its use. It is one of the most known bombers of World War II. The B-17 was primarily employed by the United States Army Air Force in daylight strategic bombing campaign in World War II against the German industry and the military targets. The United States 8th Air Force, based in many airfields in central, eastern and southern England, and the 15th Air Force, based in Italy, complemented with the RAF bombing commands nighttime area bombing in the combined bomber offensive to help secure air superiority over cities, factories, battlefields of the Western Europe in preparation for the invasion of France in 1944. So how did it come about? On the 8th of August 1934, the United States Army Air Corps tendered a proposal for a multi-engine bomber to replace the Martin B-10. The Air Corps was looking for a bomber capable of reinforcing the airfields in Hawaii, Panama and Alaska. Their requirements were for it to carry a useful bomb load at an altitude of 10,000 feet for 10 hours with a top speed of 200 miles per hour. They also desired but not required a range of 2,000 miles and a speed of 250 miles per hour. So the B-17 was in competition with other manufacturers but on its first evaluation flight, its performance was far better than its competitors. Major General Frank Maxwell Andrews of the GHQ Air Force believed that the capabilities of the large four-engined aircraft exceeded those short-range twin-engine aircraft and that the B-17 was better suited for the new and emerging United States Army Air Corps doctrine. His opinion was mirrored by the Army Corps procurement officers who before the competition had even finished had suggested buying 65 B-17s. However, disaster struck. On the second evaluation flight, the crew forgot to disengage the gust locks, which locked the control surfaces in place while the aircraft is parked on the ground. So after it took off, the aircraft entered a te steep climb, stalled, nosed over and crashed, killing the test pilot and the Boeing engineer. Other observers survived with injuries. This meant it was no longer in the competition for the contract and they were excluded thereafter. But Boeing continued its development and was rewarded with a lifeline thrown to them by the Air Corps through a legal loophole they found within the competition and ordered 13 YB-17s in November 1939. B-17's armaments consisted of five 30 caliber or 7.62 millimeter machine guns with a payload of 4,800 pounds or 2,200 kilograms of bombs that were located on two racks in the bomb bay behind the cockpit. The aircraft was powered by four Pratt & Whitney R1690 Hornet radio engines which could produce 750 horsepower. So the history of the B-17 shooting combat during the Second World War is fairly well known to most people. But a fact that I found out that I didn't know previously was that the RAF in fact actually had some of these variants in its in service because as when the RAF entered the Second World War it had no heavy bombers so it entered into an agreement with the US Army Air Corps to acquire 20 B-17Cs. These were given the service name of Fortress 1 but the bomber command abandoned the use of the aircraft and pushed them over to Coastal Command. Coastal Command did have some success with the patrols in which they used the Flying Fortress Notably on the 27th of October 1942 when they sank U-627 which was the first of 11 U-boat kills that were accredited to the RAF Fortress Group. 
Another fun fact for you was that they weren't just used for patrolling, but they were also adapted by the RAF for other missions as well. Notably that they installed equipment within the nose and belly of the aircraft that could disrupt the German radar and radio communications. Well, that's all the facts for now. Now it's time to head over to the bench. So here is our HK Models B17 early production in 148 scale. The kit number is 01F001. A, a brand new tooling and obviously the box art and everything about it is new. So looking at the box art, as you can see, quite a sweet looking uh, buy me now sort of look. Uh, I really do like the, the box art. What I want to do with this is a, a little bit different in the way of a kit review because obviously we haven't had a new moulding of the B17 type for some time and we have been reliant on the Revell stroke monogram kit that's been knocking around for years and years and years. So we're going to have a look at this uh, but we're also going to compare it to what we used to have and just to see what the differences are. So let's have a look at this box to start with and then we'll compare a few bits as we go along. So on this particular kit, your wingspan is 658 millimeters and the length is 474 millimeters with a total number of parts of 254 parts. Box art, as I said, sorry about the reflection from the lights, but the box art, as you can see, is really, really nice. Have a quick look on the sides, uh, a little bit of CAD work there to show the detail that's involved and a little warning that this is for 14 year olds plus. So as you can see on the reverse side we've got a couple of options here of how we can paint up our plane. We've got our probably a little bit more known camouflage for the UK. This was a uh, B-17 that was based in Bassingbourne, uh, part of the 322nd Bomber Squadron of the 95th Bomber Group. And our second one here we have from the 834th Bomber Squadron, that's the 486th Bomber Group based at Sudbury in England in late September 44. So you've got an early 44 and a late 44. So as I said, it's quite a sturdy box. Let's open it up and see what we find inside. So we've got our instructions, nice and big booklet there we'll go through that in a minute and then you'll find the kit parts now these are all still in bags this is literally as I've opened it now we're gonna go through all this but I'm gonna probably open all these bags uh, off the camera because I don't want to rust them but let's have a quick scoot through you've got the main fuselage there a couple of pieces you've got the wings there all in separate bags nicely done disappointingly when you get to the other sprues You've got a couple of sprues in, in a bag. But as you can see, lots and lots of plastic. And the decals at the bottom there. As I said, part of this review will be comparing some of the old mouldings that came with the, this example is Revell, but it's basically a monogram kit in 148. It's the same type plane. Um, we'll go through some of this and the other box together. But I just wanted to quickly show you the box art on here. So as you can see on the side of the box here, we've got the um, features of this particular kit. And as you can see, the length of the built model is 48.7 centimeters. The wingspan is 65.9 centimeters with a total amount of parts of 148. So as you can see, there's not a lot to this kit. So again, let's just open this box and have a quick look to see the difference. Our instructions manual, as you can see, Revell monogram. This kit number, by the way, incidentally, is kit 5600. Our decals, and as you can see, the instructions are very basic, very old. But we'll go through that a little bit later on. A canopy section there is in a sealed bag, that's good. And our main wings, all on a sprue in a separate bag. 
And as we go through, you see everything is in a sealed bag separately. So very little chance of it being damaged, which is good. Well done, Reveal Monogram. Considering how old it is and how how much we complain as modelers that this isn't um, our sprues aren't in separate bags. It seems quite strange that this one back in the day was in separate bags. But anyway, so here are the instructions for both our kits, our new kit from the HK models and our Revell monogram. Quite a difference in the size and you'll notice quite a difference in the layout. So let's have a look at the old one first. As you can see, quite busy in the way it's set out. Uh, I would say fairly clear, but it's not what, what we're used to nowadays. This is the old, very old style. Clear in, in what it needs, in what you need to do. Uh, I wouldn't say it would be confusing as such, but it's not, it's okay. It's not what we're used to these days, are we? So that's our monogram ones. Let's have a look at the HK, what they've done with there. So obviously a bit of blurb here about the Flying Fortress, uh, the early production models, a bit of history see the symbols etc of what not to do don't chew the plastic etc etc so the wingspan on the old kit is 65.9 centimeters or shall we say uh, 659 millimeters on the HK model it's uh, 658 millimeters so it's slightly smaller let's hope more accurate maybe so as I say this is the front cover bit of blurb, not, don't chew the plastic warnings etc and what to do, symbols to help you through the kit. As you can see the actual design of the instructions are CAD pictures uh, explaining what to do and how to go through it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this uh, like my other reviews, uh, I, I don't see the point really going through it too much but as you can see it's quite clear, uh, we've got total amount, oh, let me see, uh, yeah, we've got quite a few pages there, more than obviously the monogram. But quite clear, showing you where the parts go and how to fit it all together. So we'll quickly wish through this. A little bit more complication here with our um, ball turret, etc. Our wings, putting them together, the engines, put them together. Be interesting to see the detail actually on these and see what just what the difference is. Popping them back together and then obviously a layer of the sprues that are involved, the decals that are involved and our options. Of which there are four options, yes, four options with the decals we've got there. So it's all quite clear, I think that's the, the, they're quite good instructions myself. So here is our HK fuselage. As you can see, one still in a packet, one I've slipped out quickly. Let's put this one out of the way because we're not going to need that for now. One thing I immediately noticed I'm really impressed with is the fact that our the way in which it's been moulded, obviously, they're going to be really easy to, to nip out and clean up after that. You're not going to lose any detail. You're certainly not going to be in a situation where you're going to be cutting into the edge of the plastic. Let's have a quick look at the surface detail. So the surface detail, I'm hoping that that will come out quite well, is really quite nice. Uh, some of the the seam lines here of the panels might need a little bit of going over. They're not 100% um, molded correctly, but they're all there and they're pretty good. The rivet detail is superb. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's sublime. And looking along the fuselage, all of all of it is is really really nice and even your panels that are slightly raised on the detail are exactly that they look really really click crisp and nice obviously we've got the joint there for our wings to go on quite a neat little system there but we'll come over that in a minute or two a little bit of clean up on on the edges but let's have a look inside inside you can see a great deal of detail here a great deal of detail inside with all the the ribbon inside for the aircraft so you can really go to town with that let's have a quick look at the difference 
So the first thing you notice is with the Revel kit that our main fuselage parts are on one spray. But we'll have a quick look and see what the details like. Hopefully we we'll use this one up here. As you can see, we've got our panel lines. They're not they are raised panel lines and there is no riveting detail on that in any way shape or form which is quite disappointing really but as I say it's an older kit you've got some riveting here around the wing seam but you've got your raised panels here that's similar to what's on here so what we'll do hopefully you can see that the, the actual raised panels are slightly different the other thing you'll notice with the Hong Kong model is that the fuselage actually comes in a couple of bits so whereas you've got the bit that goes on the main fuselage here where the pilots are etc um, that's all fitted on molded in one where the HK isn't so as you can see through the pictures it's quite a difference there between the two fuselages look at the rail monogram kit compared to the HK models this does come with some figures and to be honest the figures are quite crude uh, but they are they are workable you can use them they're not that bad but it's going to take quite a lot of cleanup there's a quite a lot of flash as you can see from the release of these this particular mold but it's a nice touch to have some of the crew members there some mechanics etc that you can use and of course you can use this to make a diorama quite quite successfully with, a, with very few added bits and pieces so just looking at the engine detail of the Revell while it's here in my hand on the sprue basic very very basic but there is some detail there it's reasonable workable i think would be the, the correct phrase really you can certainly certainly gives you a base to work with so again the co cockpit detail is very basic very crude in the way it is and the panel lines there are raised but the rest there is some detail there and it's certainly something you can work on and if you wish to you could certainly add quite a bit to so again let's look at the wings themselves again the wings are on the monogram kit are on a sprue with other details for the build so the two sections of the hong kong models kit is uh, put together for safekeeping really and in one separate bag so as you can see from our comparison of size they are pretty much the same that millimeter is obviously where the difference is in the wing itself so our rivet detail on the Hong Kong model is sublime, very, very beautiful. And the, the panels are quite subtle in the way they're done. They're not super deep, but you're not going to lose those when you paint them at all. And you can pick out all of these rivets with a, a nice bit of weathering. The only disappointing part from it, which has been picked out by other people that have looked at this kit, is that the, the flaps themselves are molded into the wing. So to pose them in some form, uh, could be could be could be done but it's, it is quite tricky yeah so on our main underside of the wing here there are as you can probably tell I'll hold that up to the camera in the right way you can probably tell that there are some release marks here that will need to be removed not particularly difficult to do if I'm honest um, a little bit of a little bit of patience and time which this model model will, will deserve and you can rectify that quite easily but the rest of it the surface detail etc is brilliant i gotta be honest and looking at the second half the underside again equally as good there are no no blemishes with on the surface and the detail is quite phenomenal interesting the superchargers are not molded in on this but as you can see on the Revell monogram they are molded all in so that's another bit of detail that you certainly can play with and that's going to that's gonna pop and look really really beautiful the monogram obviously going to take a, little, a lot more work and I think you'll find the detail on it isn't isn't overly really brilliant so we're on to sprue D of the HK models B17 and on this particular sprue we've got our uh, towel wings uh, again the surface detail on here is sublime a few imperfections in the molding but nothing noticeable really I think it's just they look like creases but they're not it is it's something that you can quite easily overcome but that's that's fine uh, within this sprue also we've got a little bit of a cabin so you've got seats uh, the pilot seats etc and turn it over the backs of the pilot seats and then you've got 
So on here you've also got your Bombay doors. Now again, the only problem with this, as I see, as you can probably tell here, we've got our release pin marks again, and they are quite awkward and quite tricky. However, again with a little bit of patience, you certainly can clean most of that up, if not all of it. Um, I would, I personally would be potentially using a, a small chisel and scraping that across maybe. Modeling chisel that would be. Um, but that's certainly, they're certainly noticeable. So if you wanted to have your, your doors open, then obviously that's going to be picked up quite badly on that. You've got your compartment door there. Reasonable detail, raised detail there. Obviously some parts will go into that. But again, you've got some release marks on there that all need to be tidied up. But again, they're easy. They're easy, easy to sort out, I would say. But yeah, pretty good detail. The seat's got a little bit of detail on it. You've got your oxygen tank there. So onto sprue E of the Hong Kong models. And here we've got a lot more compartment floors and bulkheads, etc. Oxygen tanks here. Some radio equipment here. The detail is, is, is good. I think it's quite crisp, I've got to be honest. I'm quite happy with that. You can certainly highlight those and they will come up really, really well. And then we've got the bulkheads. Let's have a look at these bulkheads again. So the bulkhead detail is really nice, really crisp. You've got a lot of wire in there in which you can um, highlight, etc. And on the other side, again, the detail is, is, is okay. The only thing, again, that I'm slightly disappointed with is that our doors, our doors are not poseable. They are solid in there. So you, again, you can muck around with these and cut these out, but that's gonna be quite a lot of work and I'm not sure I would attempt it personally uh, because those hinges look like they could be a real, a real pain to get right. But I think a little bit of work and you could probably do it by all means. So our main, this is our main cockpit area that's looking reasonably reasonably okay detail wise be interesting to see the detail for our controls there what they are like but we'll come to those later i suspect but all in all yeah pretty good i, I like the some of the the detail that would be on the walls within the cabins i mean obviously there is going to be pe for this without a doubt that you could pick out some of the stuff with um, but as a base kit, I think it is quite reasonable. Remember, you're not going to see an awful lot inside the plane itself unless you uh, try and, and, and open it up in some form. And then obviously here we have our main part of our fuselage, the top part of our fuselage, so they say, um, where our pilot would sit and our turret, etc., and radio operator would be sitting underneath here. Um, again, the detail is really, really nice. I quite like the idea that this is a separate piece, if I'm honest, because you, if, you're, if you're relatively clever, you could potentially have that so it could pop off to show the detail inside if you were that way inclined, if you were displaying it. So that was sprue E. So here we have sprue F. Sprue F has obviously got our wheels on here. Quite like the detail of those. You've got um, the the detail on the wheel to show it's uh, it's carrying the weight of the plane, which is quite nice. You've got some of the exhaust systems and our superchargers here. Quite nice, the exhaust system, etc. Quite a bit of detail on there, easy to pick out. Um, some slight errors with the moulding on this particular supercharger. That's a little bit of flash actually. So yeah, that clean up, that'd be fine. So you've got some detail there for our undercarriage area. I believe that's the undercarriage area. It's part of the part of the engine anyway, definitely. Um, but that's that's nice. There's a lot lot of detail there, as you can probably pick out there. Quite, I'm really happy with that. And obviously, then we've got some more. We've got our flaps again. Uh, release pin marks here, and we've also got our we've also got our wheel bay doors there. I think they are. A um, little bit of detail there. That's quite nice. Pick out some stuff there. So here we have our sprue G. Now obviously this contains, as you can see, a lot of the engine detail and there is a lot of it. Detail is quite reasonable. Uh, I wouldn't say it was brilliant. 
but certainly quite a reasonable amount of detail there certainly a good base uh, but that's going to require some extras to it if you want to make it look outstanding um, I believe the covers for the engines are not poseable so hmm, do you want to go to that effort again it's another something you could do to make your stand out a little bit different a little bit of excitement within the engines I don't suppose would hurt to be honest uh, and I'm sure there'll be a PE kit for that 100% but uh, yeah that's that's pretty good now we've got our control main control um, sticks it's probably not the right word but I gotta be honest with you I'm a little disappointed in those they are very plain and um, I'm not convinced that they are the best they could be which is a shame I mean don't get me wrong they are certainly usable certainly good in that respect but they could have been a lot better Got a few more details here and uh, oxygen bottles and other tanks and bits and pieces some equipment there and they all look pretty cool I gotta be honest the seats are rudimentary but they were quite rudimentary seats in themselves yeah and we obviously got some bombs there as well some of the bombs our back wheel is quite plain but again it shows the weight of the aircraft on the wheel so that's a good thing and I just noticed we've got our machine guns here a lot of machine guns um, it isn't really until you see them you realize quite how many there was obviously it was a fortress after all so these would be the barrels for our machine guns and I've got to be honest the detail is so lacking it is phenomenal um, I'm very disappointed in that I would have thought they could have done better with that myself the detail is there but it's very 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 faint and it's not um, yeah no it's not great and I've noticed that one of my barrels there is actually broken which is great news so I may invest in extra barrels for this um, don't really want to because it's a lot of barrels and that's going to be quite a cost and again for the cost of the model HK and this isn't interior really this is really isn't interior detail this is detail that you're going to see it's going to point out it's going to stand out like a sore thumb the actual machine guns themselves again i think they're fairly basic i gotta be honest but we'll have a we'll have a compare shall we of our monogram so this is our monogram barrels and machine guns and i can't got be honest with you well done monogram there is so much more detail on those um and i i can't believe i can't believe the difference the difference is outstanding for how old this kit is I mean they're not comparable I'd even go as far to say um, just want to check the length of them really to see if they're any different in length no no they're the same sort of size but you know again this is this is what surprises me sometimes you know we are in a world where we're so lucky with what we what we we now is now produced that we forget some of the old kits actually do have some good points about them and I've got to say, HK, you need to you need to get the old monogram kit out and have another go at that because those barrels are are really bad. And if I'm absolutely honest, I would expect that sort of barrel from Airfix, not from a HK. And and the reason I'm saying that is is not to disrespect either manufacturer, but I can go and buy a, a, an Airfix kit for a fraction of the price in which this kit cost me. Um, and the barrels would be the same I wouldn't expect anything different to, to, to buy a, a kit that's this old yeah, uh, yeah I'm speechless you're, you're here I'm struggling struggling for words that, that is quite phenomenal anyway that is sprue G and next offering would be uh, sprue H which is this one we'll come back to that one in a second so here we've got some more of our detail this would be the bulkhead wall for the bombardiers compartment and the detail is quite crisp I like the detail in there lots to work with and lots to play with happy with that you've got again some machine guns here more machine guns and I've got to be honest with you on these on these barrels they are much better maybe it was just the fact that the, the mold on the previous sprue didn't quite work we've got some more cockpit detail here 
and uh, that, that all looks pretty fine. The instrument panel, I believe that is there, is uh, a one piece mold, which I, I would guess without looking at the instructions is gonna be a decal that sits in that. But again, as I say, um, there'll be an upgrade set you can buy, which will work just as well with that. You got detail there on the nose turret, quite crisp. Um, yeah, surface detail is lovely on that actually. That is Sprue H. So here we have Sprue N. And this is obviously, as you can see, our main propellers and our covering for our engine nacelles. Mold in here is quite nice. Crisp again, detail, can't complain with that. Our actual propellers are pretty good. I've got to be honest, I'm quite happy with those. I really am quite happy with those. Nice bit of detail on there that you can pop out. The bolts are all there. You certainly, with a little bit of pin washing and that sort of thing, you can certainly bring out that detail. It'll look, it'll look smart without question. So here we have our two little sprues of Sprue J and Sprue L. And this clearly is the rear gunning rear nose. Is that the right thing? It's the rear of the plane where the guns go through it, <laughs> the back of the plane. Again, uh, on this particular thing, you've got some molding here to show canvas. Subtle, uh, I get, I, I think, I think it's okay, don't get me wrong, but I think I could have had a few more creases in it here and there, and that would have made it just a little bit better, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah, it, it's passable without doubt. And then on our Sprue J, we have got some other bits and pieces here, which I'll be honest, I don't know what all those are. I would assume that's part of one of the turrets. So that brings us on to the other small parts we've got here. We've got these parts, which is the end of the plane, obviously where our tower gunner will sit. And again, the surface detail on there is crisp. It's lovely. Uh, the panel lines are very nice and the riveting detail is sublime. Can't complain with that. That does look very nice. And again, this has interior detail of the uh, ribbons, etc., of the plane. So yeah, happy with that. And the other side here, I'm not gonna open both bags because obviously they're identical in many respects, but this is our main <coughs> nose of our B-17. That way up it would be. So we'd have our a chin gun here. Our bombardier would sit inside here uh, with our uh, Perspex nose on the front. Um, yeah, the surface detail is lovely. You've got some raised panels there which were uh, fitted on. All in all, really, really nice. And again, ribbon detail inside, nice touch. Really important that you get that right um, because obviously you're gonna be able to see that inside the plane. So lastly, that brings us to our clear parts. So lots of clear plastic. It's all quite nice and clear and no scratches, etc., on it. Some detail on the cockpit uh, windows of the riveting and metalwork. It's going to be quite nice, easy to pick out. And our ball turret there as well is going to be nice and easy to put together and paint up. Okay, so then we're now on to our decals. Printed by Cartograph and the decals are lovely and crisp. No carrier film on there whatsoever and they are really, really beautiful. They're going to be great for our different versions and our young ladies that sit on the noses are crisp and clear so yeah some some beautiful decals there very happy with those and along comes some PE as well so our PE has got our radiator covers and our seat belts quite basic in all honesty but for that this scale not a problem and it's great to see a little bit of PE being thrown in So what do we think of the HK model as it is? Is it an upgrade to our monogram? Yep, I think all in all, definitely. It's much better um, molding. So with the price bracket of this particular kit, HK, I think there are some disappointments. Those disappointments for me personally are the machine guns. The machine guns just are not detailed enough. And given the fact that the monogram, which is a very old kit, can, can do it, I don't really understand how HK dropped the ball there. With the engines, engines are better detailed in some respects, but still quite plain. So for those experienced modelers that want to add a bit more detail, there is that opportunity to do so, of course. 
but with the case of the the casing of the actual engines themselves not being able to be opened i think hk have decided to to not concentrate on that and not put that into mind it opens up of course the extras that you can buy and i'm sure there'll be a whole bundle of them because there'll be people pouring over this kit to see where they can make improvements and people will definitely buy the aftermarket for it one other surprise for me is the monogram kit although yes the surface detail of the main fuselage poor but it's an old kit for an old kit to be honest with you if you wanted to spend the time and the trouble to to fix that it's you could it's fairly easy in respect of scribing of panel lines rivet detail again you could quite easily do that with the right tools and with the right amount of patience and boy would you need patience so I can understand how people are so over, moon, over the moon with the HK version. So thank you very much for watching my review. Yes, sir, I can definitely say comparing the two models, there has been a markedly step up in the quality of the model from HK. But I'll leave you with this thought. If you're a model maker that likes the processes that are involved in making models, maybe go for the Revell, give them a little bit of a chance and take the time and trouble to put right those errors that are on that kit. I think it's worthwhile to do that. So I hope you enjoyed the review and the comparison. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. So as I said, quite a, a sturdy box. Let's open it up and see what we can find inside. Oh, you wanker. Not all of that because that isn't part of it, is it? Dipshit.